Good evening, good evening. It looks like we are set over here on my end. Yes, hang on just a second. I'm sorry. There's always something I need to check at the last second, it seems. Lots of stuff going on on our end. I don't know what everybody else has been doing. Looks like we're good to go on sound. I see we've already got some folks rolling in. I know I put this up kind of late, uh, the, the post here. I've been really busy this week. I've got a lot of stuff going on in my plate. <clears throat> a lot of stuff going around in reselling uh, aspect of it. Uh, for those in Patreon, too, we're going to get to the topic at hand in just a few minutes here. I'll just do some updates. For those in Patreon, the video is actually uploading as we speak. Hopefully it's not uh, dragging my feed. I think it actually is. Let me just... Eh, it should be done in just a minute here. I'm sorry. We've had a lot of stuff going on, as I said. It's been a really busy week. I just literally got out of the shower before I hopped on here. I was out on a pick, actually. Um, I may show some of that. I don't really know. I don't do a lot of um, haul videos these days, I know, but um, I do have some we film here and there. I don't know if I'll put it out there. At least put it a couple clips probably maybe out to uh, Patreon in the next week or two. But <clears throat> topic today is going to be on the results from the survey uh, that I did with Ina over at eCommerce Bytes. I have links to the third, fourth chapters of her uh, blog on that as well. It goes into a lot of details. We're going to look at some of it tonight, um, but there's a lot of content in there that obviously we're not going to be able to cover because there are a ton of responses that she added there. So you can all kind of see um, everybody else's thoughts on things and stuff too. Again, hopefully this helps with eBay looking out for this kind of thing. Um, and I say that because they do obviously look at stuff like this. Uh, I'm, whether they do something, I can't say. But I do seriously think at this point, I, I have people reach out to us. Um, <clears throat> the name gets around. So I, I really think they they do pay attention to what's posted on on uh, by Ina over there uh, anyway. That's just my take on it. Whether they do something or not, <clears throat> I can't say. I have to say this, which is something I, I'm rarely able to say. Uh, let me make sure we're not dragging. Yeah, let me just see what... Yeah, I'm just going to cut that feed off. I'll kill it. Hang on. I'm just killing it so it's not dragging the feed. It'll be up after the show. Sorry, folks. I try to get it up ahead of time, but it's been running slow uh, since I got home. Upload canceled. That should fix the feed right now. <clears throat> I've got high speed and all that kind of stuff, but that should hopefully fix it at this point. Yeah, I'm sorry. Dra that should fix the drag. I don't think the... I think it should, Yeah, in fact, it already looks like the numbers are going back up. <clears throat> it's always a risk uh, when I do stuff like that, but you never know until you... You know, click it up. Some days, if it's not running behind, it works perfectly, and I can run a upload at the same time. I've got as fast as you can get for where we're at. <clears throat> but anyway, back to the the topic at hand here, with the the questions, the survey, and stuff. Um, again, if if no one points out what the issues are or puts out open reasons why this isn't good or that isn't good or what would help, they're they're never going to change anything. So again, if if everybody called them out on something and said, hey, this just isn't going the right direction. I would hope people would understand that that's the only way. If you never raise your hand, you're never going to be addressed. They're never going to look at it. You know, it, it's just the way the world works. You know, you call enough attention to something and stuff can change. Um, the only time I remember eBay changing face was over the um, the block and being able to run a sale right after you list something. I know every uh, that, that was probably one of the biggest ones I saw where eBay change course the only one i can think of honestly everything else they've just been this is it who cares what you guys think um but again we're all looking at their numbers wall street's looking at their numbers um <clears throat> without further ado let's go over in fact i think i had one question let me hit the one question because i didn't want to miss it it'll be gone when we come back um right up at the top here does putting vintage first hurt or help this is lucky treasures evening all i see uh aaron charles duncan mike uh, Jocks, Jewels, Gemstones, and Precious Metals, huh? <clears throat> I don't want to miss uh, the first question on here. I put the age of a vintage item in the beginning. If I know uh, a time frame 
within a decade or two, that's what goes in the title. Because some items could have been made for that length of time. If, if it's a vintage item, I do try to put vintage. And I do not use the abbreviation because if somebody's looking for it, they're going to, like a, a buyer, they're not going to think, hey, maybe they put VTGE or whatever it is they're going to be putting in there. They're going to look for vintage. And I really don't think most people uh, look for the word vintage. So they're not going to look up vintage, most of them. You know, there still might be 30%, who knows. But the point is, they're going to be looking for the item. And then when they're searching, the vintage word's going to hopefully distinguish you from the other people who sell brand new stuff, um, but pretend it's vintage. You know, you're, you're not supposed to have vintage in there. If if an item says vintage, but then it's no, or then it's a new item, you got to always be leery on stuff that's 100 years old or whatever the case may be. There's nothing that I would ever say, no matter what, even if it was never used, I would ever put as new that's truly from 100 years ago. It, it just it's, wouldn't be a new condition in my book. It's been around. There's no way to know. So anyway, I just wanted to touch on that one there. Duncan has his Hawaiian pizzas. I've never liked um, never liked pineapple on my pizza. That's one of those things I've never been happy with. Let me cut myself off here, and we're going to hop over to a feed. Hang on just a second here. Now, we're going to go over the results here. We're going to look at them. I'm going to, you know, show you the graphs. Ina was, was, uh, did a great job. I don't know if her or David did it, but uh, great job. I love the charts. Maybe it comes with the survey itself, too, but... Um, there will be another one coming up. Um, <clears throat> you know, survey-wise, I was really surprised at a lot of the results. Uh, I haven't done one before, so for me it was kind of interesting. Um, I mean, I've done little ones on here, but this was, you know, a large amount. I know people say the, the numbers may not be that, but a 1,000 is more than a lot of groups do for a – it's well over a 1,000. Um, so I – as a general consensus of the folks that, that I converse with and watch my channel and stuff like that, um, I saw a land shark picker was in the house there too, but um, the, the majority of the people are, are kind of in the same boat as I am, I would say. And I think, to me, that lets me know that at least I'm not crazy when the majority of people agree for whatever reason. Some of them obviously don't agree with what I think, and some people do have different results. So... I myself, the, the results, I took the survey only once. That's all you're allowed to do. But I took the survey. And um, for me, part of the issues are what I see. Maybe not necessarily it's affecting me because I'm still getting the sales. So I see an overall definite um, um, issue with it. It's, it's a pay-per-play site now, totally. I think from what I would gather, it's it's totally that way. Let's let's hop over and then go straight from here. You'll see a, a crossover screen for just a second. I've got to get to the right one. There we are. So this is the survey straight from uh, e-commerce bytes. Um, again, this is a there's a link to this. There's a link to the next one we're going to look at, and there's actually a link to a third one down there that goes over a few percentages and things like that. I'm a numbers guy. I like to read stuff like this. Many cases, I'd rather just read it in something that I trust, and then um, I hate watching videos sometimes because it takes forever that for them to get to the point. I can read this in a, a matter of moments, and then you know. <clears throat> anyway, that's just me. <clears throat> we'll skip the particulars up here, but if if you want to know some more about what we did and the whole works, please check that out and read that up there at the top too. We're gonna continue. I've got another video as well that covers the first two uh, sections that Ina did back on this. And I go over a lot of the data. Uh, we talk about responses, um, things that, that people felt worked, didn't work, and things like that, too. Some key factors like uh, comparisons between part-time and full-time as well as occasional or hobby sellers, too. Because everybody has a different experience from my take on what you get out of eBay. If a big store is going to see more sales because they're bigger. They've got more items for sale. A small store could have the exact same amount of sales as a big store if they've got the right kind of items. So you've got to judge it on your own experience as well as folks in the same group. Now, again, that's why I think to me people who are watching this are probably in the same boat. Again, I'm getting good sales, so but I still rate it as I don't believe that it's a fair level playing field. I do not do promoted listings, and my items are more one-offs. So the items that aren't one-offs or that are NOS or you know um, RA items on eBay, 
are items that I've got the competition issues with that don't sell as well. Again, I don't promote. If I promote it, I do feel that I do a little better on those items. So I, again, I do sell what other people sell as well. I do books and all that other stuff too. But overall, even though my sales are okay, I still do believe that it's not a level playing field anymore. I've been on the site for way too long to see it any other way. This isn't a, a crack to say eBay, the site eBay is bad. So I, I know people dogging me and say, you're, you're dogging on eBay. I'm trying to... I'm trying to make it better. I don't understand how people can't have a pro, you know, feel like they need to say something as well too. Again, you got to you got to put it out there. It's the only way stuff gets fixed if you you talk about it, you put it out there, you you state your reasoning, you put you got your ducks in a row. And and uh, the majority of people like here's the first question we're going to look at today. Do you feel that eBay gives you the tools needed to get your items sold? Now, over half, just over half right off the bat said no. Again, we, we as just said, the the stuff you sell means a difference as to how you may be doing on the site. If all of your items are lower value items of households or clothing, very common clothing, you're you're not gonna be cranking the numbers unless you have volume up. If you're selling ten ten items a day and you're only getting ten dollars profit a day on those, you know, at the end of the week that's maybe seven hundred dollars. If again, if that 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 total is the total profit you're coming off so uh, those are all factors when you look at numbers like this in in my personal opinion judge them how you want but you, you've got to take into account how uh, uh one type of seller would would have a business you know doing great sales and another one may not at the exact same time i've been on both ends of the spectrum we've been terrible when other people haven't been and vice versa so again it's not like i'm you know, trying to, I'm not special. It's just the way the, the, the stuff works sometimes. So again, you can see the results. What's telling too is 20%, nearly 20% don't know. There's, they don't have enough data. And I would agree that the only way you're going to have enough data is if, if you've either been on a long time or eBay adds more stuff in. I can judge sales against, say, one store versus another one that's selling similar items, one of ours. I can also come back in and, and look at data from years that we have personally sold. I know what I did four years ago. I know what I did 10 years ago. So that's data that you should always keep handy and, and look at. And, and again, that compares to it. If you don't have the data, you're new. eBay isn't helping you to figure out what's best for you personally. There is some stuff you can glean. You can look at what's selling best. You can look at the categories in your own specific store. All things you can do. There, There is enough information, but you're going to have to manually put stuff down in spreadsheets and stuff. It's the only other way I could I could say because if it's in a category that you're not doing you know, the top in, you're going to have to use different me uh, metrics to come in there and figure out the data. eBay's like in the hub. The, the top two categories you sell in is what a large percentage of everything on your main splash page um all the the data is from it's only from two specific categories so anyway let's slide it on down here <clears throat> now this is talking about just giving us the tools so 29 percent think yeah everything's great fine and dandy which is fine there's the, there that could be the the honest that's what it is possibly across the board nothing wrong with you know one third of the people having having good results again it comes back to what you're selling if I lived in another another place, we, we lived somewhere else before, and every time I went to every thrift store, we, we just it was just phenomenal. It was a while ago, but that was up in the Virginia area. We did Maryland. We did um, Community Thrift, I think is what it was, and, and um, we went to one in Fredericksburg out in, in VA and stuff. So anyway, I, I've, I've been in places where there's just stuff everywhere. You, you can't walk into a store because of the, the population, the demographics of around the store. You can't walk into there without seeing stuff i mean we one one trip alone we were making like twelve fifteen hundred dollars from a thrift store up in maryland 15 or 20 years ago so i mean depending on where you're at and, and all that stuff there's a big difference i know in some areas in, in ca california i've had tons of people tell me um and even hawaii i've had there's several several folks on here from hawaii um that have told me that the the pickings are very very slim um i was surprised at, at some of the the changes going through the Great Smoky Mountains for Christmas, this last Christmas, the changes that happened in many of the places. 
Some were grown, some still had, had treasures to be found, and other ones were so bad that it wasn't ever worth going back or even walking in the door. You weren't going to find anything in just general places. But So <clears throat> I think a lot of this information to me helps me determine my strategy as well. So we're going to look at some of the other information on here. Again, you read through here. You can check the link out below in the description box. Read through here. We're not going to read through everything because I'd like to discuss some of this in, in more depth without, you know, just looking at the numbers. I know everybody doesn't, you know, care so much about the numbers, but which tool or tools do you feel work the best to get your eBay items sold? Now, that's a question I've asked a lot of people because uh, I'm not going to mention the CEO's name. You all know what I think about the CEO of eBay. <clears throat> but anyway... His philosophy is that they don't care. And again, you can go and look at the, the actual statements. I can supply anybody with links. So I keep a lot of this stuff just because I'm nutso about that stuff. But um, he's basically said that uh, he's telling Wall Street that no big deal, that they're not selling as much items and their amount of items keeps dropping and they're losing people. Their answer was, the, the CEO's answer was from, again, I'm paraphrasing it here, is, was basically that we'll make it all up on selling more advertisements and more promoted listing fees. That's where they're going to make up the, the, the brunt of the difference. I, I, if we don't say it now, I'm sorry, but I hate to say this, but if you don't say it now, they could screw the, the this up with the, the guy running it so bad that there, there won't be a, a good recovery. They may never recover from a loss if it keeps dropping like a rock. 10% is a huge loss. Every business should be up 3 to 5% every year. That's bare bones minimum. That's like a grocery store level even. You know, whether they raise prices or whatever, you've got to get it up 3% as usually. If, you, if you're just stagnant and you're not making any more money, the cost of, of, you know, inflation and all that stuff rises above your, your profit margins and then you're not profitable. That's when they close. I had to close stores when I worked worked for a chain, uh, Einstein Brothers. So if a, something was going under, you, you had a break-even point. Once you go below the break-even point for so many months in a row, you can't afford to keep a, a location open and you seek other uh, other venues for that. Anyway, let's let's go back to the topic of question here. I know I ramble. Sorry, I do apologize for that. So <clears throat> here's a breakdown. There is some more data compared to this. So um, read the article again. We're not going to go over everything. There's just so much data here just from this this survey. I was really surprised at, at a lot of this. I read through every single line that, that Ina supplied to me line by line. I was really interested again because this is one of the first times I've been in a like a survey handled through a you know uh, an actual professional service and all that. So anyway we're looking at the results here. So promoted listings was 25.8% out of this. And again, I, I'm, I've never said that promoted listings isn't good. It just depends on the item. In, in some categories, you have to do it. When we did clothing, we had to do promoted listings for a lot of things. If we didn't, we didn't get seen, we didn't get, get shown. If I didn't do free shipping on the majority of clothing, shirts, pants, ties, if I didn't do free shipping on those, I could usually charge on shoes. But if, if I didn't uh, do free shipping, again, I was booted down to the bottom. Everybody was looking for the straight 10 bucks shirt, no shipping, it's mine. That's what everybody was looking for when we were doing clothing. I don't know what they're doing now. I don't do clothing anymore, but <clears throat> that that's a reasonable amount. And again, don't forget eBay made a billion dollars off of promoted listings and profit that a billion dollars like 1 20th of, of their entire revenue was just from people doing promoted listings if if everything was shown equally and fair no one would have had to spend that money in my personal opinion that's why again some of these results kind of confirm that the majority of people on ebay think that that that's pretty much screwing up the site again the item specifics and the way they search in my full-fledged opinion is tied to promoted listings it, the the new search criteria and how they pull things up again my opinion this is my opinion I don't have any proof that this is what's going on I don't want anybody coming back on that but the, the point is I fully believe that they have intentionally steered the search results to 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 um, uh, boost the folks who pay more very obviously in my book so again you're, you're getting flooded out and and unfortunately from again my opinion anybody can do a promoted listing so you've got national companies 
big business here in this country, you know, major clothing lines and stuff, they're able to play on the same field that we're on. Who's going to beat, beat, beat us out every time? It's always going to be the big company. So that's, again, my thoughts on this. I know it's corporate America. They do what they want and all that stuff. But you've got to treat your customers to a certain extent good. Otherwise, they're not going to be your customers, whether it be a buyer or a seller. We're stakeholders in the company, not shareholders, but we are stakeholders. We have a stake in the business, just as much as the, the buyers, just as much as eBay. But eBay controls 99.9% .9 of everything. So there's there's no, we're not truly a stakeholder in eBay's eyes. But So now we're going to get into the other aspects. Promoted listings, advanced ads. This is the pay-per-click version here on this one here. It's less than 1%. Again, they just started it, so I don't know if that's good or bad, and who cares if it's good or bad. That's not the point. It, it's it's dismal uh, results. Uh, I, I think that, to me, again, it depends on what you sell. To, that, to me, though, shows that they're out of touch with what most of the buyers would do. I can understand the promoted listings to bring you always back, but the pay-per-click, if you're selling one-offs, is a waste of your money. If you're selling, uh, if you got replenishables and you're selling 100,000 units or 10,000 units of something, the pay-per-click is a usable method that I would personally recommend using if you've got certain amounts of quantity. If that listing is going to be static and never move, if you're going to be wanting more and more traffic to that specific spot. I personally, on, on items like that, if I had 100,000 quantity, it was a mover, I would probably run permanently a, a, a um, pay-per-click method because it would my fingers, my footprint for that item would start to spread more and more and more. So it would build up enough because of search results showing up. But anyway, we won't get into that in depth. But again, a lot of this stuff can work, but you've got to know your business to know which one works best for you. Going back to the question we had before with um, not as many people um, knowing whether they're getting good results or not, is a question here. Let me just ch uh, flop over for just a second. I want to make sure we're not missing anything here or any. Um... Hang on, I'm just making sure we're we're getting everything in here. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Let me let me pop back. I just wanted to make sure that we weren't um, missing anything or I wasn't cut off or anything. Um, <clears throat> so Markdown Manager. That's what I use. Markdown Manager outweighs, at least with the folks who took the survey, well over a thousand, which is a, a reasonable amount to to extrapolate out from there for a general consensus. I know I, I would gather by the numbers that we looked at, by what they sell. Again, we asked what people sell, so we've got a pretty good mix of all types of items. There's people that just sell clothing who took the survey, books, and the whole works, and, and considerable amounts. So, it, it, Markdown still seems to me to be the best way to do it as long as you're doing self-similar or refreshing your listings at least on a routine basis um, i have nothing in my store that's over 60 days we've backed it off a little bit we're trying to see where we've got a playing mark due to cross listing issues that we've been having um, if you're selling similar for those in, in my patreon we're going to have an ink frog private group um, <clears throat> if you're selling similar you kind of want to do it through Ink Frog if you if you're doing, or if you're on sub, whatever you're doing, you want to do it on those specific platforms so you're not having to worry about update or linkage or mapping your products and stuff back. Um, those are used again, third-party apps to cross-list your items, say to your own store like a Shopify, and then from there you can branch out and include Amazon and all that into one single spot, which would be your landing pad, so you can sync your items. Uh, so hopefully that makes a little sense. I don't want to go off on a big tangent on that, but that's the basics on what we're talking about here. There's some issues with, with doing it, ha being forced to do sell similar that affect how you handle your third-party apps. I don't know if anybody else has brought that up, but it's 100% a, a issue. And it's, it's it, it, again, didn't even totally dawn on me until other folks started bringing it to my attention too. Um, I'm just now back into it. We're Ink Frog, Shopify, everything's rolling on our end. We're almost ready to, to roll it out to everybody else. But coupons, next one here. Coupons, I ran some out. Again, it depends on how many you send out. It depends on the amount of discount and all that kind of stuff. If you post a coupon as a permanent coupon link that's sitting up there and all that kind of stuff. My only worry on that and thinking, and again, from what I've seen, coupons have been around for, what, a year or so that we could do. 
That's not a good number in my opinion. We tried them a couple of times, spent a large number of, of hours on it and putting a bunch out here and there and stuff, sending them one out at a time because they didn't have the group set up at that point. Um, and the results were, were dismal. I mean, it was just terrible results. The problem I see it is if you're sending it out to somebody, chances are they're not even going to read the email and know what it is. They're going to think it's just more junk because eBay sends out a lot of stuff. Um, we've turned off everything that we can, and I've shown you in videos how to turn off all that stuff so you're not getting all that junk stuff from eBay. You can turn off a lot of stuff. You can shut off a lot of the privacy aspects so you're not getting pushed items and all that kind of stuff, too. Just FYI, i got a video on it up here, too. But Now, other, and again, a lot of this information is broken down in these articles, so I would recommend looking through the four articles plus the fifth one, which gives you some data here on e-commerce bytes. <clears throat> I'm not getting paid to say this either, so just FYI, we had no money changed hands at all, and this this was just us getting together and doing some chats and, and getting some stuff together. So again, this isn't a paid thing at all. So I'm not paid to do any of this. I'm not paid to at all. So just to get that out of the way, because I know somebody's going to think that, but all the information is, is in these articles here that she's got. Again, I could spend all day talking about this. I've read this thing over. I've looked over at the numbers. I've looked at the the private, the the the, tr the straight data she sent me as well. So um, <clears throat> it's telltaling to me at where where everybody's at what's going on the numbers are, pr are promising to me that more people are using markdown manager versus promoted listings again it depends on the category you're in i personally think it should be a level playing field unless the 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 seller has you know done a terrible job they're not mailing on time they got bad feedback the products lots of of stuff going on in their account that's maybe a different story because again if i ran a site I would want the, the, the buyers to understand that I want good people on it. <clears throat> I think we've all ordered something and got crap in the mail. And I got a brick once, a couple bricks from Hawaii, from something we bought. And it was supposed to have been a PlayStation 3 or 4. I don't remember which one, but it was one of the, one of the, the ones the kids had a few years ago when they were younger. But let's move on to the next one here. I, I want to get over get through this too. Which eBay tool or tools are worth the cost? Now, this one, again, I anticipated the results would be about the same on here, and, and that's exactly what they are. They, the people who used the one used it because they felt it worked for them. So, again, that's what I'm looking at here. Now, a, a telltale sign on this one is there's far less people um, thought it was worth the cost. Again, I, it, there's a learning curve with this. I'll give eBay a little credit only because of the learning curve, and they don't explain it. It, 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 it doesn't sound good the way they explain it. I think maybe a built-in video onto eBay itself showing how it works and showing you know that you're not going to get screwed using it might have been a little better better basis or requiring somebody the first time they use it to watch at least a, a minute and a half video. I don't think that's unreasonable. It's just so you understand it and eBay could put out the warning, hey, this is for your own good just to make sure you don't mess up or spend too much money. We're, we're looking out for you. That would have been something smart. Just like with buyers when they tell them, hey, you've got to put in your information before you can even put an offer. And I think if they, they worded it somehow or pop up a little video, 10, set, 10 seconds or what, I don't know, something. But <clears throat> that's what I would do. But again, we're back down here. Numbers pretty much correlate, which again, I thought, I don't know, this one's 5.9%. I don't know. It, it's hard to say on this one here. That's the only one that, that makes me wonder. But again, these are right on the money. In fact, they're a little higher on this one here. This one's a little higher on the on the auction promoted listings. That's a new feature again. It's a pay per play. Uh, otherwise, again, the breakdowns are down here, which we'll look at some of it. But we're not going to go over the entire thing because we've still got the other article to go over on this as well, too. Uh, again, this is this is good information as a person who's information driven, in my personal opinion. I like to know this. I like to know what other people do and how their business is going and all that kind of stuff to compare it to the market. Where are we going with reselling, I guess, is the point on that. Um, <clears throat> again, if you look through here, there's some interesting stuff. Sellers like the concept of coupons, but a number of readers indicated they didn't work, perhaps in part because sellers have to market the coupon to shoppers themselves. In the past, eBay would put out coupons. It didn't cost the, the sellers any money, and, and sometimes the coupon would be like 10% off this type of item. And, you know, basically eBay would give the or pay for part of the purchase the buyer is getting like 10% of it. So you didn't ever see a, an issue where the money didn't come in. That's what they had done in the past, but this is a totally different where 
they're not going to advertise at all for those items. None of the commercials, none of the things I see. I did hear one for the first time in months, a car commercial, eBay Motors. But it was a terrible commercial. It came on, the first part was radio commercial. The first part came on, and it was eBay Motors sponsored this, this whatever it was. And then some random stuff played. And then they came back with just another blog blurp. And it was not memorable. It, it just doesn't, I can't even tell you what it said, honestly. And, and if it was, you know, I was interested in knowing. I, it, was just, it was just a bad commercial. But anyway, so I don't use the coupons. We wasted hours. It didn't get us any results back. Some people have sent out 1,000 and got eight, eight purchases or eight more interest in it. it. You never know. You might have got a couple of those purchases even without the coupon. There, there's no real way to know. There's, there's no um, nothing, no litmus test to compare anything to. There's no comparison. So if I don't have the, a baseline to compare it to, I can't say it actually helped. Chances are if there was eight, at least one or two of those would be my guess. Maybe even half of those were legit. Yeah, they, they bought it only because of the coupon. If it's worth that much to you with the time it takes to send one out, it might be a great feature for you, even if it's only four more sales a week or every time you do it. So, <clears throat> again, that, that may be good. Now, I've heard some complaints on the coupons. I don't know if this is true, but I've had a lot of people tell me this, and you can look, and there's posts even of people saying this, that if you send out a coupon, you can't send another one out for a very long length of time. I don't know if that's true. I, I haven't seen any confirmation on that in either way, but maybe I'll try looking that up on a eBay message board. The last two or three messages I or posts I, I made, they never responded on any of them. So I just figured it's not even worth the time. The last uh, update, they had a big post on it. They're going to be watching and answering questions. I saw one or two out of 100 or 200 comments that they even responded to. So they weren't really serious on responding it. But <clears throat> let's see here. Uh, some sellers said they felt not being able to track the effectiveness of tools was a problem. Others pointed to glitches uh, that kept them from using eBay tools. <clears throat> Here, I'm not going to call it a name or anything else like that, but I have a, a Patreon who um, <clears throat> hasn't been able to print labels from one of their accounts for like a year. And eBay just keeps giving them the around. They can't figure it out. They can't figure it out. But they can use that same connection, the same uh, browser, everything on a different account, and everything works fine. I can't see as that's a specific account issue uh, because there's no way you can turn off that, that ability on your own. It has to be something set on one on eBay side from that. And it's been a long time. I've, I think she's brought it up to me two or three times or at least twice once in the past, and I figured it was fixed by now, but it's still not fixed. <clears throat> Let's move on down. So let, let's here's some comments down here too. Some of the comments I, I would recommend you reading through the comments. Again, these are all anonymous. We don't know who who put them in. It doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> one of mine's probably in here, honestly. Um, but read through these. I, I always find that interesting. To, to it gets you inside other sellers' heads, and you can kind of judge on it. And again, I hope eBay reads some of these because this is a chance for. All parties to benefit from understanding each person's side. They don't understand our side. None of those people have to worry. Probably the people running eBay probably have people pick up groceries for them. They don't shop. All their stuff is, you know, pre pre done. They may have an assistant who even opens their mail and does everything. Who knows? You know. <clears throat> but when you're making millions a year like that, you're you're not living in my world. You know, nothing wrong. I'm not trying to say pick on somebody who makes a lot of money, but they're, they're not, look at their actions, look at what they do and what they say and small valued and low valued buyers and stuff. I mean, that's just terrible, but <clears throat> I wish coupons could be given to those who don't have a store. Yeah, that's another thing. A lot of people uh, complain when they don't have a store. Now, I, obviously eBay is doing that to get you to get the store. I think with the basic four ninety five store, you can get that. Uh, what's the next level up? I think the next level up, or starter store is four or five bucks, six bucks, and then the next one up is like twenty-two dollars or something. In all honesty, <clears throat> the if it's five bucks or the the starter store to get the access to coupons, if it was me, again, I don't, I'm not a big fan in those running eBay. Don't get me wrong, but if it was me, if it was five or six bucks and I get all these other features, I'd just get the store. Um, and eventually, you're going to have enough items, hopefully, where the store makes it financially smarter to get the store anyway. If you get to a certain point <clears throat> with the fees you individually pay for your items, it's going to you know, cost you a lot more. So the store is economically uh, wise, especially when you hit a certain amount of listings. 
Again, if I, if I had to pay, you know, per item with the amount of items I have, I'd, I'd go broke. I wouldn't be able to sell on eBay, truthfully. Wouldn't be worth the while. <clears throat> when we blast our coupons on social media, we get a few more sales. But true organic sales have died. eBay is not promoting eBay. They are relying on its sellers to do all the promoting. That's true for everything but the the five thousand uh, dollar purses, the uh, what five thousand uh, dollar what else do they got on there? Shoes and all that stuff, trading cards and all. I, I don't care about any of that. I don't I don't really sell anything other than the trading cards, and I never sell. Um, not as of yet. We've got some being graded, but I, I have never get too much into worrying about graded cards. Just me. I think there's a bubble going to be be blown up at some point, and those prices will crash. I remember the 90s crash of the, the trade cards, and it's crashed 20 years before that or so, in the 78, 79 range, or just before that, um, <clears throat> at least the cards that I collected. Uh, I think using send offer eligible actually makes a difference. Uh, refuse to use promoted listing. Fees are already too high, and there are glitches. Charge more than I uh, suspected. I entered 1% just to see if it made a difference and was charged 10% never again. I've heard glitches like that, too. Um, I've even been double charged for things, which without a doubt and stuff, and had to have eBay take it off my bill. We do try to look at our bill at least twice a month these days just to make sure if something's going on that I catch it. Um, <clears throat> I just would hope they would fix the glitches, but that still is, is an issue. I, I, I'm going to have to give eBay credit for, for, for something here for a minute. And you guys, again, I meant to finish talking about that earlier. I had to call customer support. Those in Patreon know exactly why. Um, and they answered concierge or whatever they did. I had several nice calls. The first two were just awesome. Uh, two gentlemen knew the, the thing. They were straight to the point. They were they knew the, the policy. They weren't getting into this and that. They got off, uh, put me on hold for just a minute. Very super polite. It was quick call. And they fixed some 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 big issues for us, which was very happy. Um, I, I had all the facts in a row. I had everything lined up. I, I could, you know. Anyway, they did an awesome job on phone support. So I'm not going to mess with uh, Facebook, um, eBay for business anymore because you got. They tell you don't send personal information before you even, you know, uh, know what's going on. And then they send you a link. And I'm I'm not messing with. I, I hate this the Facebook social media crap anyway or Meta whatever they want to call themselves now. It's not my thing, I guess. Um, the phone service is back up, and I was really surprised. I was impressed with with the the level of of um, professionalism. It was probably the best two I've had in years on eBay. I was really and they were different people too. I had a third one too, um, right there on the same day. Uh, she wasn't as I don't know. I'm, I, it's, she she did an okay job, not to, to disparage her, but still much better than it had been. <clears throat> uh, I don't use any of those. I feel eBay gets enough of my money. Yeah, we'll let you read through here. We're going to hop on to the next one. Look at the amount of comments on here. So, again, this is this is huge to me. This is, this is an insight. And, again, I hope eBay has their eyes open. I truly, truly, truly do because maybe they'd, they'd learn something. This is what they need to see. This is what's going to get them to understand the other side of the picture. I would never just center in on four different categories or four specific different items like $5,000 purses. There's only a limited amount of people that buy those. And if the economy goes the way it's it's kind of going now, again, that's not practical. There's going to be a bubble burst and there's or either that or there's not going to be enough people to buy them. And meanwhile, you've ticked off the people who sell the cheaper stuff, which is selling or could sell better if you would actually market it. So again, Read read through here, please. I, I honestly, sincerely recommend it because there's a lot. Look at how much is here. Look at look at the sheer quantity uh, of useful information for eBay for number one, whether they'll they'll look at it or not. Again, it, 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 a lot of these are repeats. A lot of these are the same frustration in someone else's words. That's all it is. And again, uh, everybody, hopefully, our our words and and, and statements mean something. You know, uh, gosh. Look at their numbers. How can you think 18% you know, dive in stock prices is a good thing? How can you think 10% revenue law or you know, uh, gross merchandise volume down being 10%? I think it was 9.9 or something like that, but that's not good. Losing 10% of your, your, your base is not good. That's a, a very bad number. Again, that's why all this is, is concerning. They could fix this. They could fix all of this if they just stopped doing the lining our pocket stuff, their pockets. 
Don't worry about buying the stocks back. Fix the site. Let everybody know you really care. And gosh, that would go so much farther than just trying to buy back stocks to line your stockholders' uh, pockets. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, but advertise with $2 billion of that. Put everybody, eBay should be in every, everybody's mouth. I was talking to a patron, too, um, talking about jingles. <clears throat> I found it on eBay. It used to be a thing. I, I haven't heard that in years now. Maybe eBay still has it. I don't even know if they still have it, but uh, jingles don't always. It's uh, how many people right now, with the, still the pandemic issues, are going to be wanting a five thousand dollar purse, or a five thousand dollar pair of tennis shoes? I know there's always crowds, and I'm not saying it's wrong to have a five thousand dollar purse or a five thousand dollar pair of of tennis shoes. I've sold items for five thousand dollars. I don't think that's wrong. But uh, how many people are in those areas? You got to understand that there are limited markets when you get up to a certain dollar amount. There's only only so many people that would spend a set amount for a, a set item at any time. And if the economy is bad, they'll be less prone to do it. I'm always looking ahead. I'm not short-sighted. And that's the problem that eBay is totally short-sighted. Please read some of these. You'll be shocked at, at the, the amount of repeat comments from the same, you know, from different people doing the same thing. So now this is the, the, the last part here. <clears throat> I think I got the right one in here. Yeah. And this is going into um, some more of the, the comments uh, from some of the questions here. Tell us what tools you use to help you sell on eBay that are from third-party vendors. Third-party vendor would be InkFrog for those who use InkFrog. And I know quite a few. I've talked to many, and I, I still talk to many that use InkFrog, Shopify. I know people that use Cellbrite. I've used Cellbrite in the past. There was nothing really wrong with, with those options as well. They, they have less issues than I've ever seen on eBay in the last three or four years. Even even if they've been shut down here and there, I've when they are up, which is very rare for any of those sites to ever be down for even a minute in my personal view, but um, it's it's always spot on. Uh, so these are questions on that. Now this is a fill in the, the blank basically here. So you could say whatever you want. The first one um, strikes a bell for me because I used to use Mr. Lister, and that was something eBay supplied to us, and it it helped me to be able to list massive quantities of items again you had to do that's back in the day when you had to upload your images to your own storage and you had to do know at least H, htm or uh, um, src uh, img the image uh, uh, html code for it so you'd have to do your actual img src textual you we cut and paste most of the time but um that's that's what you'd have to do to, and then to add them to your listing and all that stuff turbo lister is is the the grandson of mr lister if i'm if i remember right and somebody else has turbo lister here as well ebay pr uh, promised replacement yeah i i actually was sad to see when them they got rid of that and i don't understand why um, other than maybe the fact of them turning over to item specifics in general. Again, lots of data in here. We're not going to be able to read it all, but this is interesting to me because I thought I was the only one who missed Mr. Lister and Turbo Lister. Mr. Lister goes way back, as I said, that was like 15, 20 years ago, if I remember right, maybe years, years ago, at least a decade. Uh, I sell fine china, so I use replacement.com as a research tool to get pattern names and descriptions. So here again, here's tools people use. That would be considered a third party. It's somebody else unrelated to you or to eBay. I use the I use replacements.com too. Um, I, I buy silverware. You've seen me. I always look at it all the time. That's a real good item to sell, in all honesty. Uh, a replacement piece, NOS. If I'm buying NOS, there there's a... Well, I don't want to give it away, but there's a place down here where people... Do donations specifically for certain certain things, and I can get like NOS stuff down there. They're out of the box and stuff usually. It's usually like dump offs or returns and stuff. But you can get, you know, ten of this, five of that, eight of this in silverware NOS still with the plastic sleeves on them. And you know, eighteen twenty bucks sometimes a, for a single spoon or fork, as long as it's NOS in the right pattern. Again, so just like uh, the military silverware. Again, we're not going to read through here. Pirate Ship, that's one that I've got a Pirate Ship account as well. We've talked about that because eBay intentionally blocks, again, my opinion, but I'm sure that's the case, intentionally blocks you from shipping media items in categories that they don't deem as media, even though the item that you are going to ship is legally 100% allowed to go media mail. I truthfully believe, in my opinion, that that's um, something worked out through the post office because of their relationship and the discounts and them adding the extra service in for the card scanning um, envelope, which again, I will never use. It doesn't give you a, a landing scatter or a, a um, delivered scan like 
most of the time from what I see. Um, Worth Point, again, another one. We'll just flip through here real quick. Facebook, some people list. Um, Pinterest. 3D Seller. Now, I've had people talk about that. I've actually looked into that one, too. I may may talk about that in another video. Um, <clears throat> list Perfectly. Um, I've heard a lot of people talk about that. I, I Anything that doesn't sync, auto-sync across every place that it, it, it cross-lists for me, I don't want to use it. I don't want to have to worry. I'd rather spend more money on something that's going to automate something for me because it, that saves me time. My time is more valuable doing other things than worrying about taking items down every single night of my life. It's just not practical. If you sell, if you're cross-listing on, say, six sites and you sell one item on one site, that same, even if you listed that very same day, you got them all up on, on eight sites, you're going to have to go that same evening and take them down from seven different sites. So the time factor, again, it's, you need an auto sync. An auto sync if you want to expand your business and take away any extra headaches. So when you sell an item on one site, it takes them down from the other seven. And the only way to do that is a third party that auto syncs all of your inventory. Again, this isn't a ding on specific apps or something. This is my personal opinion on what I will use. I don't want to use something that I, that I have to take it down from every other site. One site, maybe it's, it's not a problem if, the, if you're not selling a ton of items. When you get into a bunch... That's when it. That's when it's an issue. Ink frog here. Another uh, list perfectly. Photo room sometimes to jazz up my photos. Again, that's a free app. I know that one too. Um, again, read through here. Now, third-party tools cited by uh, respondents. So these are third-party tools specifically as well. Six bits. Another one I've I've messed with in the past. Octiva. I've seen that one used. I've looked at them in the in the past. Some of these I've heard about. There's a couple I think that I haven't. Google Ads I've, I've played around with for a long time. GoDaddy I know. Garage Sales for the Mac I don't know that one. PhotoFuse don't know. Uh, Fiverr I do use that occasionally. Ecom Dash that's another one that's out there. Uh, Easy Auction Tracker. Some of these are ones that I would recommend you looking at what some of these are. I mean this is great information. People ask what tools to use. Here's a huge list. This should hopefully scare eBay a little bit to, to say hey maybe we need to add some more some more services in for the price that we're charging. If I had some of the extra stuff that all these other other uh, apps and stuff offered for included in the fees we're paying, I probably wouldn't complain if they raised it even a little more because it would automate things for me. If eBay uh, had a way to automate sell similar, and again, they're probably working on it now, I bet you, I would probably just go ahead and do it. Because, again, it takes time, and, and, and as long as it's something that's not going to mess up, again, I use PayPal specifically for doing a lot of this. MailChimp, a mail service, um, there's a, quite a few. I've got a mail service, a mail suite that I use that handles a bunch of different stuff and it directs it into one file. And anyway, I'm not going to get into a bunch of that, but there's Cellbrite. Sky, Scout IQ I've used. I have, a, I have a, a subscription to that, just FYI. Um, QuickBooks, I don't mess with, but I, I uh, pick click I do use. Uh, there's another one for Photo Room. Uh, PayPal, you can sell items. You can drop links and sell items straight from your PayPal account at, what, 3.49% plus point, what, 35 cents. Uh, so, again, Sellhound, I've seen people use that. I've had a Sellhound account in the past, too. Seller Sourcebook, I know. Shopify. Stamps.com. I have a, a USPS. Uh, just go to the post office. Get a site. You can ship from the post office's site, too. Just FYI. Not every everyone. Vendo, Vindio, um, again, uh, Wonder Lister. That's kind of like the old Mr. Lister. WordPress, WorthPoint, YouTube videos. So, I mean, there's a lot of information. The art of books. So, I mean, it just depends on what you're doing. There's a lot of information in here. So, I would honestly recommend looking through here. And I don't even, I don't even believe this is all of the results from it, too. Now, there's just a couple more here we're going to look at. What other strategies do you use to gain greater visibility on eBay? Uh, so, again... Everybody has their own unique thing. A lot of the, the respondents that I've personally looked into were um, ending and sell similar. A lot of other YouTubers talk about it as well. Tweaking the price of your items. Um, you know, raising them up a dollar one month and then make, keeping track of what you've raised. Do it by category specific and, you know, oldest to, uh, to newest so you can at least come back in there and, and just reverse this, the process. Um, <clears throat> I use stuff like that. A lot of other people use similar similar strategies on there. Listing continuously, so many items a day. Responding to emails as quickly as possible. I think that's a big one, too. When I, I pound on all that kind of stuff on the same time, 
it works. If you, you're not getting success with just doing one or two of those strategies, I would honestly and sincerely recommend doing them all together. Who cares if you're running a sales markdown if you price correctly and you got like a price structure, a 2x, 3x, whatever you're doing for your, your pricing um, structure. It gives you room to run a, a, a sales markdown and accept or send out offers to watchers. The majority of what we sell on some days, not every day, but I, I looked at that. I don't want to say every day because it's not every day, but the majority of what we sell on, on most days is offers to watchers. Us taking the time four, five, six, seven times a day. Somebody's here all the time, so it's no big deal. Sending out offers to watchers from the hub. It, it, it works. It, it does give us a considerable amount. Um, again, your price has got to be good. Your photos have to be good. Your keyword title SEO has got to be good. So, I mean, if you're putting up crap, you're going to get crap back out of it. I'll just say that. That's the biggest thing I can say. Bang, read, read through here. There's a lot. I mean, look at all this. There's a lot. There is a lot of, of good comments. There's a lot of smart people making some really good points on stuff uh, from other points of view besides just mine or yours. So, again, look at all this. Look at all this. I Again, look through here. There's a lot of information on here. The old Selling Manager Pro, that was a good tool for the most part. So, again, there's links to everything here if you want to see the whole thing. Uh, link to my first video covering it as well. We're going to pop back over. We're going to pop that off here. We're going to get me back up on here. And back off we go. And let me get rid of a few things here. Hopefully, that's a little bit eye-opening on this. Again, if, if you didn't look at the results in this, I would honestly at least recommend you looking at the steps and things other, other folks are doing on there eBay could fix a lot of this. eBay could alleviate the extra work if they cared. Again, I don't think if everybody had an easier means to do anything, people are going to complain as much if we can see that they were making progress to improve our lives. It's not doing anything for us whenever they raise the fees or they have glitches day after day after day after day. It doesn't do anything for the quality of our lives. We're paying more, and again, they're not seeing it from our point that we're paying more and we're getting less service back out of it. So that's my take on it. I mean, you can take it however you want, but I've been doing this for since eBay was called eBay, like the very first year. So I've seen it through many, many CEOs in the whole works. This, this one, the current CEO, again, in my opinion, he won't be here more than a year, maybe two, if something really weird happens where they're able to, to draw this back. But if you keep losing the revenue... You keep losing losing your base, your base that's that's providing. And when you lose a seller, you're losing a buyer. I'm not going to – whatever side I go to would be the one I'd promote or, or buy items off of. We buy items off of Amazon and eBay, but, you know, it just depends on the item. But I, if, if I'm not going to sell on eBay because they screwed me over or they, they ran off all the customers, I'm not going to want to buy off of them either. There are other sources to buy. Most of the items that I personally would buy, I can find them on Etsy cross-listed or on, on Amazon or a couple other sites, in all honesty. My wife collects Weebles. We've got a massive collection of Weebles. I can find the same one, and sometimes we kind of can pick and choose which site to buy it off of because it might be a little cheaper on one site versus the other. Or one offers a, a best offer versus another one doesn't. Or even sometimes um, uh, Lulu Burlu is, is a foreign site that we buy from. It's, it's in France. It's a nice, big, huge vintage toy site. Um, but um, sometimes it's cheaper to buy it straight from the site itself, and then they don't pay as many fees, and they're happy about it. And they'll give you a better deal sometimes too, so... Again, eBay's, eBay's, eBay's pushing more people to do that. So that's why, again, they, they, they need to fix some stuff for, for the folks to feel like they're getting their money's worth and that they're, they're being treated as not an employee. The way they're treating the majority of people, and I, I bet you if I ran a questionnaire on how many people felt they were more of an employee of eBay than anything else these days, there would be a high number. I bet you it would be over 50%, well over 50%. Uh, because again, I hear that comment all the time. We just work for eBay because they they hold all the keys, and you know you either leave and hope you can make up the difference, or you stick it out. Um, again, I never said hey leave eBay. That it's it's based on revenue. You know, if you haven't hit the thumbs up, please slam that thumbs up. I got 216 people in house right now. We got 77 likes. I know I kind of ramble sometimes, um, <clears throat> but again, show some love for the channel if you're enjoying the conversation. Let's see if I can pop over how much feed I lost on here. Maybe I can still see some of it. Um, 
Some folks have uh, are getting good sales. I've got already Mike in the house. Uh, Jack S. Retro, how you doing? Duncan, as I said. Uh, Jocks Jules, we already called. Hey, Marty. Uh, Jiminy Flippin', another fellow YouTuber out there, too. Hey, Marty, hope you're doing well. I think I hit you back already on an email. I, I answered everything just before the show, and I promise you... Uh, within, say, 30 or so minutes from uh, the end of the show tonight, I'll have the next, um, it's a bolo video for Patreon will be up. I got a bunch of shorts, too. Um, I've got some on shipping. I've got some on um, some really nice haul items that we got. Uh, I've had a really nice week on, on most most uh, fronts here, honestly. Won some really good battles here on some things. Um, anyway, it's, it's been a fairly good week. Uh, I got a call, I got a mention in um, the New Yorker, so that was kind of interesting. I, I was that one kind of surprised me. Um, hey Jeff, how you doing? Jeff Loftus in house. Uh, hey Nancy, good evening Nancy. Hopefully you were doing well too. I responded every day. I think you had something that I, I hit back on too. Uh, hey Winter Crow, how are you? How are you doing? Good evening to you as well. The wet nurse stripper, how are you doing? Yeah, we'll pop back to eBay in just a few minutes here. Chad Griffiths, how are you doing? Hot idea, welcome, welcome. Mr. Hale, how you doing, Bob? Hopefully you are doing well and things are going in the right direction. Daryl, Carolina picks right down below. How you doing, Daryl? Hopefully you are doing well also. Again, there's links down below to all of those articles and another one, and then you can get to any one from just any one of those other ones down there, too. Um, I read that stuff. I don't know about everybody else, but I read a bunch on Wall Street Journal the other day that were talking about eBay. Um, somebody sent me, I'm, quite a few people send me, and we go back and forth, and they send me um, links to some articles. I don't always get a chance to dig through everything, and I'm always interested to see what, what eBay is stating out in public or Amazon or Etsy or any of the other ones there as well. Matt Jake, how are you doing? Ping G, how are you doing? Anaheim, huh? I've been out that way once or twice. Uh, I have been to California before. Um, Whittier, we were out in Whittier. They, we had a, Einstein Brothers had a, a big bagel factory out there. That's where they made McDonald's bagels at one time, uh, back in the day, 20 years ago. Nesbitt Experience, how are you doing? How are you doing? Good evening, uh, Linda. Uh, and there's already Mike here, okay. Janet B., good evening, from Australia, huh? Duncan's another fellow Australian. Kathy's Australian. There's th four or five or six, maybe more than that, from Australia that I have in here, too. And there's the land chart picker. How are you doing, Craig? Good to see you in the house, too. Another fellow YouTuber out in there in, in YouTube world. Oh, um, I'm going to have another roundtable on here. Um, I've got some other patrons we're going to uh, shoot back and forth with. Travis, I think I saw him in here already. He's going to be on the first one just because he kind of didn't even... His whole introduction, the whole first six minutes, seven minutes of his part were kind of shot, and then he missed the ending um, too. So anyway, Travis is going to be on there with me, and there'll be four other folks too. Um, so just FYI, that's coming up. I'm trying to get it in this month still. Uh, we're still pretty early, so it'll probably I think I'm shooting for the last week in March, and it'll be on a usual Thursday show. The last one did very well. I got a lot of good comments, a lot of good um, feedback. A lot of people enjoyed the conversation. It was a lot of different ideas from various different levels, um, lots of unifying content, so I, I felt really good about it. Um, there's always a few haters, so no big deal on that. Um, wouldn't be a good world if somebody didn't have the right to come and complain about something. So I complain enough myself sometimes. So anyway, uh, at least my goal is to fix it. Anyway, let's move on from there. Uh, sourcing Treasures, welcome. Joe Samard, good evening, good evening. Good afternoon. So you must be CA or farther, uh, maybe even, who knows, farther out than that, farther west. Uh, Diane Ware, how are you doing? The disgruntled octopus. I love that. I love some of the Japanese artwork. There's there's several with an octopus, and I'm not going to go into the details on that one image, but I love some of the old Chinese and Japanese dragons and and oh, that's just awesome work. I mean, I love. I I did some video at the uh, Toledo Art Museum, and they've got a they've got some really nice pieces down there. Well, thank you again, Winter Crow, Sherry Thorup. How are you doing? Well, thank you very kindly for, for the binge in there. 
I don't get a chance to binge watch much anything these days. Uh, my vision is just, oh my God, I'm so, f I'm, my only frustration right now in these days has been my, my eyes. Oh my gosh. And I still get the nasty person. I just delete them these days. A nasty person complaining about me blinking too much. But um, Lisa, how you doing? Right below, I've got Black Crystal Dice. Good evening. Good to see you in the house again. <clears throat> New to you provisions. Welcome, welcome. Uh, let's see here. Amazon Seller 99. Hey, good to see you back in house here. Purple Rain. You can't beat that. I remember when that movie came out. Um, Doves Cry. I love that song. Uh, when Prince rolls up in the motorcycle. I've seen that movie many times. Uh, the music is, 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 is a good soundtrack. I own that soundtrack. Um, Let's Go Crazy was always one of my favorites, though. I wasn't a big fan of Little Red Corvette. I mean, it wasn't bad, but I wasn't my favorite. Let's Go Crazy I really liked. Um, I was young, so, you know, I was a teenager. That was a good song. Yeah, hopefully it is the wet nurse flipper. Uh, hopefully eBay pays attention. And I mean, again, my goal would be for eBay to fix it so I wouldn't have to do videos talking about the stuff that they're doing all the time. Because, uh, man, I get, I always get hate on every video I do when I when I say stuff like that. Even from other channels come and have to do do stuff to me and and post nasty stuff and all kinds of stuff. I don't post them on the. I've all my all my comments are filtered these days because there's people f bombs and I just I'm I'm I never I'm never surprised anymore at the stuff people say. <clears throat> yeah, I know I'm behind, so we're gonna we're gonna. Uh, Freddie finds another one from Hawaii. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Carmen Martin, good evening. Atlas Attic. Hey, how you guys doing there? Atlas Attic, welcome in the house. Sourcing treasures. Uh, let's see here. Burning gems. Buckeye cable, not Ohioans. Yeah, but I don't have Buckeye. I don't have Buckeye cable. We don't have cable. I don't. I haven't had cable, satellite, or anything for, geez, eighteen years. That's the last time we had a hookup or anything or anything. We ever, if it's not on the internet, I don't see it anymore. Haven't for almost over eighteen years, probably. Honestly, my kids have never had, ever had satellite or a cable or any of that. It's always been just internet specifically. Um, they've never had normal, normal anything like that. Um, that's just me, I guess. Kids don't mind it. Vintage Vani, how you doing? Good evening, good evening. Cat Funk, welcome, welcome. Oregon, huh? I don't know if that's Oregon, Ohio, or Oregon, the state. Wanda Greer, welcome, welcome. My mom always, or not mom, my, my wife always liked Pam Greer, most of her movies, but anyway. I always think of that whenever I see your name on here. North Carolina, I've been through there many times myself. Uh, the wet nurse uh, stripper question: uh, What about using eras like '60s, '70s, '80s? Is it important to put the '19 in there? You know, I've thought about that, and I've even done like searches on eBay. And depending on where I'm doing them or when I'm doing them, the results are different so many different times. I don't know if there's any way to get a, a consensus on it some days, or, or it's just so glitchy these days they still haven't figured out what's going on. I did some searches. The, the wife. The wife was looking for um, Shavarsky crystals. She was looking for a necklace or something, some beads. And the, the, the search was just terrible. And I haven't looked. And I'm, she, didn't, she, hasn't, she doesn't mess around that much with stuff like that. So the results that eBay gave her, they locked her into a category. Again, I complain about that all the time. So if you do a random search <clears throat> on eBay and you type something in on the main page, most of the time it steers you to the category eBay thinks that, that uh, the item should be found in. Even if there, let's say there's 60% of whatever your search result is in one specific locked down, narrowed down specific category, that's where eBay's gonna take you. Even though 40% more of that exact same keywords, those same items are still on the platform somewhere else. So that's, I, I, I've been complaining about that for years. That's a disservice to those on eBay, in my opinion, to those trying to find stuff, to your buyers. <clears throat> they should never narrow it down assuming what 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 your buyer wants. 
unless you know they've looked it up a thousand times but we're looking up first time the crystals and and you can't find them effectively without doing a whole bunch of crap it got to be annoying and that's why ebay's bounce rate in my opinion has looked terrible lately i mean for a while honestly but a bounce rate means how long a person stays how many pages they go to and how long they stay on a page when when they land there so they're on google they search up something they click on a link and they bounce they go over to a page how long are they there before they bounce from that page that's a number that you should look at if you want to know what what sites are best too just like you know trending and who's got the volume and, and you know how much traffic they have those are those are like key demographics key numbers you look for when you're looking at like the the roots of how well a site's doing you know <clears throat> compare myspace to to um say facebook MySpace still exists. Justin Timberlake owns it. Um, but may, both uh, basically musicians. I think I may even still have a page I've never shut down over there. I don't know. It's been so long. I haven't touched it in so long. But anyway, let, let, let me get off rambling. I always put in 1967 and then uh, hyphen, uh, like 1960s hyphen 70s. And that's what I put all squished together uh, usually. I, I want to have the information in there, and, and some items I sell might be 1860 or 1960, or even in some cases 1760. So I think, to me, it's the very first thing I put all the way to the left, so it's the first thing that, that you see. If, if you guys, anybody out there, guys, gals, saw, uh, I think it was um, CBC Canadian uh, Broadcast had a, a expose, and they're really good on stuff like that. I don't usually watch a lot of the U.S. news anymore these days, but... Um, I was watching um, an expose on, on Etsy, and I know other people, I think Dom's talked about it and some other folks, Primetime Treasure Hunter. Um, a lot of the items you see on Etsy are made in factories, and they pretend to be, you know, handcrafted stuff. We went to, even, there's one locally, maybe I'll do a video on it, but we went to some, some flea markets, even in, on Christmas, and there was probably 20% of the items were made to look like they're old in mass quantity, and you could order them already pre-aged looking and stuff, like um, stools that were made to look like they were uh, tractor seats. They had tons of them, and the base was made to look like it was like an old plant stand. It was all cast iron, but it's, it's brand new stuff. I can go to Amazon and order that stuff right now. So somebody's ordering them in bulk wholesale and then taking them to local shops and stuff and just putting them out there. They're not saying reproduction or what. They just put a price on it. Somebody buys it and off they go. You assume if it's in an antique or a collectibles place that it would be antique and collectible. And that's, you know, I can't say everybody is misleading, but a lot of folks are. So again, that's, I try to put the exact date. I think that means something, especially to the folks that buy the older stuff. Again, I've got uh, again. I could have 1760 items. Truthfully, I've had, I've sold stuff back in the 1560s. We used to sell page uh, leaflets, pages from old books. You know, single page at a time. You, I was able to source those in Mississippi at one point, but it's all gone. It's washed away from Katrina. But anyway, that was a great sourcing place at one time, the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. I can't tell you how good it was when when it was there before Katrina. But that's a long time gone. Annie's saying um, she's pretty sure that VTG uh, is mapped to vintage. Again, that may be very well the case. I don't know. I've seen people put VTGE, so I don't know if they're all the same or what. I just put vintage. Um, usually you can crush it with, you know, a certain amount of words. Once it gets to the end of the title, you know, it, sometimes I just throw words in there just to fill it up. So when people are scanning it, it draws a little more attention. It's a, a tiny way to get in maybe an extra 5% of people to, to give it a little more look, I would gather. Um, because I look when sometimes see what the long ones are and stuff. And, and especially if they've got a blow up, a zoom in, and their whole image, the main gallery view image, uh, and the viewing uh, when you're searching is is like massive and it fills it up, you know. Thanks, Annie. That that may very well be the case. I need to look into that more because you pointed out a couple other things. Annie, another good YouTuber, she's pointed out some things that I wasn't aware of, like on image size and stuff. I don't dig into all that very often, but I probably should. And she's made me kind of go out and look a little more into that. So thanks, Annie, as always. Great information. Great channel too. Check out Annie. Um, another YouTuber, if you didn't know that, uh, and she's she was on my last um, my last roundtable. I got to sign up on there too, Annie. You're welcome to sign up. I'm going to use the sign up sheet on the Patreon that's up there now. 
Um, I'll, so I'll do one, and then I'll use the folks that didn't get in straight from there. So that is the post for that uh, for the next two uh, round tables, honestly. Um, Atlas Attic was dead most of the month in January, and February, but the last three days has finally picked up. I'm gonna. I, I think there's gonna be a drop in sales. There's gonna be a drop in, in a bunch of stuff. I've been seeing a drop with just even YouTube in general on, on a lot of views on certain types of videos and stuff because I think a lot of people are watching the news. There's a lot going on and stuff in the news and, and it's not all good, of course. So I'm not gonna get into politics or any of that aspect of it, but I see a, a dip in, and usually this time of year there is a dip. What I started to do, where sales are still pretty pretty steady across. I'm still doing fourth quarter sales, so I just I re, we up the from 20 percent to 25 percent on the sale we ran um, yesterday. Sale ends on Friday. We'll re uh, uh, assess what we're going to do with our next sale that we start that runs Friday to Monday. Again, I run sales three days a week, and they run for two to three days. Uh, Friday morning, I reassess. And I'm going to judge by the current state of sales, and I'll look at some other other stores, and I'll talk to a couple other people before. But I, I pretty much anticipate that there will be a dive a little bit in sales for some folks, quite a few across the board. Clothing, I heard, is down. Maybe I'm wrong, but the majority of people, the lar the vast majority of people contacted me who sell clothing told me that they've been down for a little while. Households, the same thing. Video games slowed off, other than the very, very hottest games. Um, card sales are still pretty steady. Comic book sales are pretty steady. In fact, I got some really good ones I need to get up. I got a couple $500 comic books sitting here. Um, and let's get to some more comments here. If I run out of inventory, should I put my store on a on a seller is a way setting? I've never run out of inventory. I don't. I've never. I couldn't give you an honest answer on that without just guesstimating. Personally, if you don't have any inventory in the store at all. Um, no one's going to go to your store anyway. I don't think it would hurt anything. Um, you know, I would just worry about getting inventory up. It would be nice to sell everything out, obviously, but then your SOL after that, you got to put the work back in to get stuff listed and stuff. I, I, I don't know on that one. I would probably just leave it there and not put it on there. Because if you start to list stuff, it could have already buried your, your, your account for a little while, and then it usually takes a day or two when you come back from a, a vacation setting, you know, time away setting, to get back in. We've done a few here and there. We did one for Christmas. Um, people were still here. We still sent out some stuff. So, um, But pretty much everybody, we said, let's everybody have a nice Christmas, and I didn't worry about anything Christmas, and we took some time off. I didn't been a long time coming. I don't take many many vacations or anything. I like to be in the the, the pilot seat, I guess to say. And um, uh, one boss I had, Lou. Uh, you know, when you're when you know where where everything is is uh, run from, like the the main spot that handles everything, you kind of lock yourself in there, I guess. But um, vintage Vanya, uh, so used for excellent items for old. Stephen PB, how are you doing? David Rubens, good evening, good evening. Yeah, there's Dom, primetime treasure hunter in the house. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, Dom's saying the same thing. It maps to VTG, maps to vintage. Yeah, I don't, I didn't pay attention. Like when you do, when you do um, cross listing, it's the same map that they're talking about. When you want to link uh, one listing from one platform to another listing on another platform, you do what's called mapping. If you add in other words that will tie to like VTG and vintage, if you want to have words come up that are, are different, like like in YouTube, you can put in keywords for like a misspelling. So let's say someone always misspells the same word all the time. eBay could put the mis a misspelled version of vintage in there. So if somebody accidentally misspells it, it would map to the word vintage every time. There's a drawback in why eBay doesn't do that for a bunch of other words because sometimes maybe some vintage name might be so close that it might screw up other search criteria. That's that's always been my take on that. Um, Big John, how are you doing? Big Bad John, uh, I always like that song. If you don't know the song, look it up on YouTube. Big Bad John, yep. In fact, I've got the record here. Uh, hey, there's Travis right now. Travis is going to be, as long as he's available, he's offered the spot, first spot on the next one. He missed the, we chat usually after the after the show, and he didn't realize, and I just, I should have expressed it. Um, so anyway, and he missed the first beginning, so Travis has the first offer on that. But 1987 Ventures, Tracy, how are you doing? Good to see you in the house again. 
Good to see some some usual names. Carlene, how are you doing? I did hit you back too. I think uh, several of you folks in there too. I see some some Patreons. I did respond, as I said, to everything. There are a few extra questions that I I put in there too for folks. Um, so uh, there's a few little bit more information I need. I think somebody had a postcard. I need to see the back of it. A few other things like that. Um, Mashari Al um, Mohassan. Uh, hopefully, I didn't butcher it. I'm a novice eBay buyer. I have been uh, have begun buying rare international VHS a few months ago. Does anyone know how to access Mexican, Argentina, uh, Latin American region of eBay? Just type in, um, go to Google, and then just like I, when I go to eBay, well, I've got favorite sites, but there's actually a master page, and it's even one of my videos that has every link to every one of the pages. Just type in Mexico eBay site, and, and you'll get it, whatever site you're looking for. I do UK, you can do France, whatever, because um, we buy and mess with some of the other sites itself. I mean, I buy off of six different eBay sites, honestly, for collectible-wise. Um, Weebles, Weebles mostly, but... I wish the the Japan one was better, but or the the Asian market site that they have is better. But anyway, um, there's a um, a Latin American site that's like the eBay. It's not eBay. Oh, geez, I've got it. I use it even occasionally. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but it's it's a huge site. It's comparable. And in fact, there's another one. I I'm looking for Brecker Weebles. Brecker, B-R-E-K-A-R, Brecker Weebles. They're from Spain and a couple other markets, um, Latin American markets. So I've been looking for those. So if you anybody knows what they are, knows what I'm talking about, or searches them, I pay really good money for those. You know, just the basic one, I'd probably give you 75 to 100 on just the common ones. That's top dollar, I promise you. I just want them. It's We've been looking forever. I missed the last one. Um, somebody beat me to it when it went up, but... Um, Anyway, I've got one from almost every production-run company that made them or, or country. We finally got one from, from Hong Kong not too long ago. But anyway, um, Tron. I loved Tron, the original one as a kid. I had all the trade cards. Didn't have the action figures. My mom never would buy them. Jennifer uh, Yingling, how are you doing? Dead for you two, January and February. I, I honestly can't complain right now. I haven't been putting in as much effort into getting as much stuff up, rushing to do it as much, just because we're working on Ink Frog, our own. There's no way I'm going through this year without having our stuff spread out on our own and getting that running in the whole works and getting a sync again. I, I won't do anything if it's not auto sync, and that's where it has to be. Um, we've been, again, messing with Ink Frog. If I, I, I'm still, we're having a chat on Ink Frog. So for those who are at Ink Frog or using some other platform like that, um, there may be a better better way to do something. If I can't find a better way, as much as Ink Frog isn't so bad, I, I may have to look elsewhere if I can't figure out where I'm not going to have to be constantly um, having to worry about the sell similar messing up all my listings. When you sell similar on a third party or on eBay, it messes up all your listings all the way down. So if you're auto sync with say Shopify through some cell bright or whatever you're using ink frog, when you mess around with it on eBay and do sell similar, you, it's going to remove the items from there. It won't auto sync. So meaning that if you sell it on your own Shopify after you do the relist, you're going to have to manually go back in and take them down all the time. And when you do sell similar and you resell your entire store, that means every single item in your store over there is going to be uh, have to be re-imported uh, back in. And that can take a day with the quantity we have just to re-import all my listings back in. You know, and if you just use the basic importer, you know, you don't get all the information. If you use a, a more advanced importer with Shopify, it's going to cost you. So you don't want to be doing that all the time. It would be impractical. There's got to be a way to map future ones by the title automatically, or you might have to pay to have an API written, which might be might be more practical. I don't know. Um, rare international Disney VHSs. There are some rare ones, too. A, a U.S. version is obviously the VHS version of Cars. It's worth like a thousand in like rough condition. As long as it plays well, if the box is a little beat up, they still can sell for like a thousand bucks. It was released at the end of the VH on, VHS run, and that Cars. I'm talking about the cartoon with Mater and all that. That it was, uh, I think, only released to the like the Disney Videotape Club or some something like that. I know it sells high. I, I've never run into one in real good condition. 
last one they wanted a fortune for. I couldn't have made any money, so I passed it up. Uh, let's see here. Let me pop on down. Usually the first of each month is slow. People usually have all their bills on the first. Yeah, you can set your clock by that sometimes too. Every two weeks is payday for a large group, so sometimes some sellers can see a pattern that every two weeks their sales boost up, and then the the, the midweek there, the the week in between where they're not getting a check, they may not see as many sales. I see that mostly for like um, households, clothing, and stuff, only because they don't have the extra funds. The the folks in that group usually they're they're living pay they may be living paycheck to paycheck. This isn't a, a diss. I, I did that myself for years of my life because we never made a lot of money. My parents never made a lot of money. But uh, anyway, um, so I, you you gotta you gotta take all that into account. So I don't again I don't worry about a weekly dip or something like that. If you're watching your numbers, you're doing projections. You're you're running at it's basically an estimate what you think you'll make at the end of the year based on the numbers and stuff i've showed it many times how to do it maybe i'll pop another video up on how to do that so but if you watch that and your sales start to dip you can do some movements you can run a sale increase the sales margin maybe up some prices a little bit more if you get a dip going on but if you're not paying a, a close attention and watching it closely you know you're not seeing what your projections would be at the end of the month on, on day seven you wait till like the 20th and you're like well what's going on i don't have my sales are way way down this month you've missed 13 days from the from the 7th through the 20th when you decide to do something you've missed 13 days to adjust and fix your revenue you know that's that's just my take on it i don't wait till it's it's down down i wait till i see a a pattern a day or two and something's going on i'm running sales two days three days so if it's down for two days i run a sale for a little more and two days the sales ended so it's not like i'm giving away the house it fills in any gaps that way so again listing always helps though listing always helps let's pop in here we're going to end it in just a few minutes i know i've rambled on for quite some time um are you a collector? Don, I have purchased about 2,000 postcards over the past year, following instructions as far as types to purchase. What would you suggest? List them on eBay or HIP postcard? Uh, list them on eBay and just cross-pull cross, cross pull them over to HIP. Depending on how many you have up there, it's not very expensive. And I've always, I don't think a month's come by where I didn't make enough profit to make it worth my while. The only problem with HIP is it, it auto-syncs with eBay, so you never have to take stuff down. Um, I'm sorry, it auto-syncs with HIP. So if something sells on eBay, it removes it from HIP. But it doesn't work technically the way back without downloading one little simple file and then uploading it to eBay. It's a pet peeve. I know I don't like to do stuff like that, but this, I'm only worrying about one single one that's only half, half, half off. And apparently, from what I've heard, they're, they're supposed to be fixing a way around it. So I'll trust them. It used to work fine before. It's a glitch since eBay did the update in October or something else has changed. I don't know what the, the whole story was, but the, the owner of HIP actually responded and, and gave me a resp uh, an explanation. So I don't want to... They, they were polite and nice, and I know that their their goal is to, to get it going at least. So anyway. Uh, again, eBay, list on eBay, and then you can just zap them over. Uh, Jennifer Yingling, she used to have sales... Um, Every day, not anymore. Carlene, ha sales have been down. I had my first day of no sales this week. First time in a long time. Still listing, still selling similar, still running sales. I, 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 I really think this week's going to be down. I, I really do because of the news. Starting on the 7th, the, if you look at trending, look at trending. Trending like on sales platforms is down. People aren't spending as much time because they're a little worried about the economy right now with everything else going on. So I, I do see uh, an issue with sales happening in the near, near future for many different categories. Again, it depends on what you sell. What we sell, the vast majority of what you see that we sell are items that nobody needs. Nobody needs what, what I sell, most of it. Nobody needs it at all. Nobody needs. I sold a, a 78 record, a bopper the other day, 175 bucks, and it's something. 99.9% .9 of every single person out there would never know who this was. It's not something anybody needs. You can get the clip of it on YouTube, probably. I didn't look. I know the song by heart, but um, I didn't look. But I'm sure there's a version of it you can get right now for free if you want to hear it. It's some, nobody needs that. Nobody needs a $250 trade card we sell or a postcard for $150. Nobody needs that. So if you sell stuff that nobody needs 
they're still they're still buying it because they they're not they have the extra money they may tail it down a hair you know and and worry about something else for a little bit but they already have extra money to be able to spend that kind of money you know it, it's not it's not the same consideration if all of your items are items that are necessities for for folks who don't have extra income they don't have expendable income again this isn't a crack my family lived with no expendable income for most of my childhood my mom made my made shirts that I had to wear in the early 70s. She sewed them from, for, it was so much cheaper than buying them. Or she bought me, we had garage sale clothes. That's how I grew up. My parents never, my dad worked and my mom worked nights as a, as a charge nurse at a nursing home two nights a week. And then she had a babysitter if, if my father wasn't there, which was very rare. So, I mean, I, I lived on, you know, bare bones. My parents never, well, I've had some very terrible Christmases in the past and and um birthday so anyway it's life that's what happens you know do the best you can um yep thanks marty hit that like button i always forget that right at 202 people in house i've got 132 thumbs up if you're enjoying the conversation again please slam that thumbs up show some love for the channel we're going to end it in just a couple minutes here i do have a private chat at nine with somebody tonight so i don't want to be late and i need to set up a few things um I don't know about everybody else, but my life these days, I'm busy as can be. There's a lot of opportunities out there. Um, again, those in Patreon, you know, I've been bringing some other stuff in there um, off reselling topics. Um, we're going to go into those too. I'm not going to holler them out here, but um, you'll see some more of those videos. I'm going to show you some results probably in the near future on some of those too. But. Um... Atlas Attic, yeah, uh, that's why I have other online stores as well. Yes, don't put all your eggs in one basket, most definitely. We're going to end it off at there. I know I'm, I don't get to all the questions. Um, I try. I talk a lot. Links down below. Those are for uh, checking out the survey results. Um, I've read over them all. In fact, a couple of them I read over a couple times because I wanted to make sure I got all of the specific comments and, and, and things. Again, if, if we don't say anything and, and if everybody banded together and said, eBay, please do something to stop all these glitches or something, maybe something would happen. But pretending that there's nothing going on and pretending that everything's rosy and keen when the majority of people are having sales issues or forced to go to another site or forced to pay extra money to promote, you know, something's wrong. There's something wrong with it. When over half of it, when you're losing uh, gross um, uh, volume, uh, gross merchandise volumes down 10%. When you're losing 10% of your sellers, 10% of buyers. I mean, all that's terrible, you know. And it's all directly related to to the management, not the site. I still love the site itself when it works right. The concept, the the atmosphere is still there, but the people running it are going to run it into the ground if they don't change the course. Everything that I've said, as well as many other resellers and YouTubers, about the, the, the direction they're going is, is coming to fruition, not by my... I don't want it to do that. I want eBay to be a viable platform where everybody loves going there and everybody is the first place they think of to buy something vintage, cool, collectible, odd, unique. Um, I, I, I found it on eBay, for crying out loud. I mean, even that would have been better for them to keep going instead of, I found the $5,000 purse on eBay or I found a $5,000 pair of shoes on eBay. The, you, you're, you're, you're 5 or 10% of the market are the ones, maybe less than that, are the ones who would buy those $5,000 items. Maybe 3%, maybe 2%. You can't ignore the other 98% of the, the folks who would buy off the platform. It's just not a, a good practice. It's going to kill it as, as well as the glitches is there as well, too. But I'm going to let you go. I do appreciate everybody coming on. I do have a video already shot for tomorrow here on, on YouTube. Um, I've got a bolo. I don't know. I've got two shot. I don't know if I'll do the bolo one or not. May do a haul. I don't know. We'll, we'll see which one I'll do. A flip of a coin this side. As soon as I finish off here, I will get the video up for patrons. It should be up by about 9, 10. Uh, so if you hang out or you're you're out and want to see a, another video there, it's another Bolo video too. Something I've talked about in the past quite some time ago. We just got another big big amount of them in, so uh, we're going to show you those, and that'll be out by about nine ten. You'll have that other video up. But I appreciate everybody for uh, for coming on tonight. Sincerely do. Again, if you haven't hit the thumbs up, please slam the thumbs up. More content out tomorrow, and I hope you all have a good day. <laughs>